one final question. Um, we seem to be in sort of a really unique kind of ecosystem or environment here in the Tampa Bay area where there are all of these different um, plant medicine practices coming together. Um, you know, we've got the the plant spirituality of, of ayahuasca ceremonies and other, you know, indigenous Amazonian medicine happening here and just a thriving um, acupuncture and, and Chinese herbalist community and Western herbalists and just this nexus of, of plant knowledge. What do you think it is about this area? You know, it's, it's funny, and I was talking about this recently, you know, I think New York City is always referred to as the melting pot of, of the world. I think kind of this area is a unique melting pot that we have uh, a long, uh, a large traditional culture coming from the islands, from Central and South America. Um, but we also see a lot of the Eastern Europeans are coming here that bring their own plant medicines and traditions in here. Um, and they're all kind of melding together. A lot of the, the black community, the African community comes here. And like you said, from both the spiritual uh, perspective, uh, the ceremonial perspective, but we've also, some of the very first acupuncture schools in the nation were here in Florida, um, one here in the St. Pete area, but also we've got uh, now two schools in Sarasota, two schools in Gainesville, and as this community just in general grows and prospers, we're seeing everything from the functional medicine to the Chinese medicine, uh, there's some longtime Ayurvedic practitioners here. We had an Ayurvedic school here for many years. Um, and they haven't quite yet learned to integrate. Like, they're not as aware of each other. And certainly from the Tradition School of Little Studies being here for 20 years now, um, we really see that it is probably very slowly starting to become cohesive. That we're starting to recognize there's all these different traditions um, and we're starting to find all the parallels. And so I think there's going to be a blossoming of all of those communities together in this community with growing levels of respect uh, for each other and understanding of each other. So it's really exciting to be at the forefront of all of that and doing my best to help facilitate it at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you've kind of been the, the crossroads for this for the, the past 20 years. Um, you know, and you do the classes on Chinese herbalism and Western herbalism. Western and Chinese. Um, and we actually have, I'm starting to bring other speakers. So we have somebody teaching Ayurvedic. Um, one of my graduates from both Western and Chinese does a lot of medicine making and spends like two hours focusing on a single plant that I think I'm super jealous about actually. Brilliant <laughs> idea. <laughs> so it's really been nice to, at the school, bringing all these people together um, to help both educate my own students, but also the general public, whatever possible. Awesome. Well, it's, it's really cool to be a part of, and I'm looking forward to see where all this flourishing leads us in the future. And, and thank you so much for your for work as a healer, a teacher, and, and keeping this all going. Thank you. And thank you for bringing the, the idea of poison plants to the forefront. It's not often talked about. So it's a, an interesting uh, branch to really see uh, starting to be talked about more often. Yeah, I think it, it just kind of brings us back to that original way of, of thinking and interacting with plants, whether they're poisonous plants or tonic herbs or culinary herbs. It just sort of is a, a different way of approaching. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.